Hi guys, welcome back. So I'm just watching the camera bleeping to make sure that it's actually doing something. Don't want any blank videos. Um, right, we're at this stage. I'm going to pop my suit on, glove on. Don't want to put paint on my hand. Now going to use a spray gun to put the clear on. Um, I've never painted anything with an aerosol with clear. Um, doesn't get you the finish you want. You spend more time um, polishing it after to get the finish you want. Um, I haven't tried the new style two-pack aerosols. I can't see no reason why they're as not any, as or uh, well, they are as good as a, as a spray gun. Um, but as I you've probably seen in my last couple of videos, the Iwata LPH 300, fantastic little gun. Um, all my small parts, I'm using this as my clear gun now. It's it does a perfect job. Um, I put a PPS cup in this one, um, only for the fact was two or three parts I'd done. A couple of three days ago, had a couple of little bits in it. I decided that the bits were coming from somewhere, so I've put a PPS cup in here because it's got a, its own big special filter. I have strained the paint into the PPS cup, um, but I'm also just going to rely on make sure it's not coming out of the paint. I'm just trying to establish where the little few little bits came from. They were clear bits; they weren't coloured bits, um, and they were so tiny. But it was just I just didn't want to do with it. Um, paint I'm using. I've said about this before. Um, Left-handed, right-handed, make your mind up in a minute. Um, Autoclear, HS body, um, scratch resistant, VOC compliant. Um, as you probably guessed from other videos that I've made, um, big planet man. I don't like upsetting the planet. I think we're, um, we only borrow the planet. It's not gonna be here forever. Um, if a product comes out that's water-based, if a product comes out that's VOC compliant, let's use it. It's, you know, what I found is the, um, technical side of the paint, what goes into the technology of making the paint gets better and better and better as they're trying to make more greener products. So you're only fooling yourself buying a, a, a non-VOC compliant paint. Um, the technology isn't in the paint, they just used to throw whatever they wanted to in there and, and it painted and that was it. Um, but these days, um, the amount of solids that's in the paints, that how quick they flash off, um, the way there's like an anti-sagging agent in them so years ago if I was to put paint on like I do these days it would have fallen off on the floor there's anti-sagging agents anti-shrink um, they don't die back as much as they used to they don't go dull after they've been stoved and things so um, best advice jump on board with any new product that comes out there it only gets better it only gets better but I'm really pleased with this as, as I said a few videos ago budget priced um, clear um, I hardly use any any thinner any reducer in this at all. I find it's um, it's just great out the gun. Once again, modern guns they've come on a long way. They will atomize a paint that's quite heavily bodied quite easily. Um, so no problems there. But I'm, I'm pleased with this. As I say, I've, it's only the first time I've used it, and I should definitely be buying some more. It's uh, for uh, like smart repair, small parts. Um, it's very 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 good. Um, right, enough talking. Parts are fully flashed off now, as you can see, they're nice and dull. Um, I will give them a very light tack ragging. Um, even with a tack rag, as soft as this might be, there's a chance of you pulling a little piece of metallic that's sat in that surface out of the, the paint, because obviously the metallic's just sat on the surface. Um, pulling that little piece of sharp metallic out and dragging it across your paint, so you could s still scratch the part. So once again, all we're looking for is to remove the foreign bodies off the surface Airborne trash, um, little tiny hairs that fall out, um, dust, all sorts of things like that. We're trying to move those from the surface. If there's any metallic that's uneven in the surface, you will be able to flow it out with the clear coat. So you don't necessarily need to get the surface perfectly without imperfection, but the clear coat will cover that up. You can flow out things that's in the clear coat. Um, I put the fan on again, so it might be a little bit of noise. I'll have to spend a couple of seconds just setting up the pressures on the gun, uh, just to get a nice fan pattern as again, um, mixing pressures and amount of paint and your size your nozzle for the part in hand. Um, yes, you can go to the manual. It says set that to 1.6 bars. That's it, wallop the paint on. Um, we're gonna create a factory orange peel in this by whatever means necessary. If it means a slightly lower pressure than recommended, slightly higher pressure than recommended, that's what we'll do. We'll try and get a very slight peel in this. I don't want it wet to look like it's a flat and polished finish. It needs to be a factory finish. Right, I'll turn the fan on. Uh, keep watching. I'll try and talk 
anything that comes to mind as, I, uh, as I'm going through, anything that's relevant, I'll let you know. Soft strokes. Compliant. It's as it's as good and as safe as you can get it. And let's go. This part really is the anticlimax of the painting. As you've seen from the time we've spent so far prepping the panel, getting things right, whatever. But clear lacquer is 20 seconds and it's done. So uh, there we go. That's the first coat. Avoid moving them as I'm doing now. Let them sand nice and free because obviously moving it about in the room there's more chance of you collecting any airborne dust but as you can see nice shiny coat of paint that's a closed coat that isn't to get full gloss 
that's to close the metallic in to make sure that there's no metallic bare on the surface it's fully wetted up on the surface let that go off now that will flash off for um, easily 10 minutes 15 minutes not a problem not too big a window if you start going into half an hour's 45 minutes when you try and wet it back up you can get wrinkling in the surface so there is a, a nice window that you should be doing it in um, but I should give that now um, at least 10 minutes or so um, then my next coat of paint that I'll put on there I will slow the gun down a little bit be a bit more precise where I want the paint um, and put its final finish on and this is where we're needing to look at the orange peel that's going on I need to create an orange peel um, I've had people um, when they're trying to buy a car or have been to car shows and things and I see the uneducated stood at the side of a car looking down the car saying oh it's a horrible paint finish it's got orange peel all over it um, is orange peel a bad thing is orange peel a good thing um, my thought is what does the clear lacquer on the surface of the paint do it protects the paint it protects the thing that you've painted from ultraviolet um, I went on a course one day and the lecture guy there said um, ultraviolet rays hitting your paint if you have an absolute perfect finish of paint no orange peel whatsoever all of that ultraviolet is absorbed into the paint if however you have a slight orange peel on the surface and I mean slight don't think I'm not, not talking about a horrible paint job I'm thinking something that you really have to look at to see that it is there um, if you have a slight orange peel on the on the painted surface the ultraviolet rays can be deflected diffused from being absorbed into your painted finish because of all the angles that the light is actually moving from the orange peel finish and I thought is that right is that not and then I've sort of thought of it over the years I've seen some very very posh finishes done on custom cars where they've all been flatted and polished and things and over the years the paint finish has died back it started to dull off and with a custom finish um, the type of people that own cars custom finish they're always out there polishing the car it might get polished 10 15 20 times a year so they're taking away any of that um, how can I put it not traffic film but but sort of debris that the, the erosion of the surface so they're continually polishing that that surface that's been contaminated off the car so yes the car still looks good but then I thought on a production car when I started painting which was I think I started in about 1970s ish um, so especially some of the colors the reds the pale yellows uh, all sorts of colors actually um, within about two or three years old they just went dull they faded on the surface like there was no tomorrow um, modern day finishes now that have a slight orange peel in I've seen cars and probably you have 10 15 years old my, my own personal car Renault is is 11 years old this year um, paint hasn't faded at all and I, to be fair I wash it three times a year I don't look after it but it's a fantastic finish there's a slight orange peel in there so that in my mind the theory behind what this lecture guy has said has worked for me um, a manufacturer's finish with a slight orange peel on it is more resistant to fading color change ultraviolet contamination traffic film it, it, it's just it's just right it's just right so a little bit of orange peel is where I like to be right I'll turn off the camera again which means I'm going to make sorry to you guys a fourth video we'll put the final finish on um, unfortunately at the moment I've got no bits no contamination in there so I may not be able to do a um, rectification sort of video for you because I've, I've at the moment just got nothing to rectify um, so I'll give it another probably seven or eight minutes make sure that that's flashed off um, I'll start the camera again and we'll put the final finish on um, and then I'll obviously take the camera in and try uploading these if I come back out after uploading these first three and find there is something I need to dress in once again I'll bring the camera back down and I'll take you through that bit as well uh, hang fire for the second coat. <laughs> 